I remember when I was 22 and I reported here to the Marine Corps Recruit Depot for duty. A lot has changed since then. Corporal Daniel W.C. Riley was born in Victoria, British Columbia. At age 13, his family moved to Littleton, Colorado. After graduating from high school, while still a Canadian, he enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. At age 25, Riley stepped on an IED in the Marja Valley in Afghanistan. To hear Dan tell it, he is one of the lucky ones. After boot camp, uh, I was stationed in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Uh, from there, I deployed to Iraq, just outside of Ramadi. While I was in Iraq, um, about halfway through my deployment on July 4th, 2009, all my paperwork came through and I was sworn in as a citizen uh, by Vice President Biden. As a former Marine Corps major, I understand the devotion that troops like Daniel feel towards their fellow service members. Once he completed his first combat tour in Iraq, he volunteered to do an additional combat tour in Afghanistan as a combat replacement. On December 16, 2010, with about a week left in his deployment, Riley and his rifle platoon were clearing a compound in their sector. They had already found and destroyed two IEDs that morning when Riley stepped on a third. We were on our way out, and I was, I think, the third guy back in line. And we walked over the edge of the wall in the compound, which we had all walked over once already. As we were walking out, my left foot went down, I stepped, and just instantaneously the ground gave out a little bit, and I just knew it wasn't good. Blacked out for a split second, thrown in the air. Uh, I remember coming down on what at the time I thought were my legs, retrospect weren't. And then the pain set in, just started screaming, just instantaneously screaming, uh, just pain shooting through your body. Uh, my IED set off an ambush. Once that IED went off, all the Taliban around decided to let loose. Thankfully, Doc was on me right away. All the guys that were with me were there really fast. Grabbed my legs, grabbed my arm, talking me through it. All, all the guys knew what they were doing. Got the helicopter there and got me on a stretcher. I guess the helicopter landed across a field that hadn't been cleared, and uh, they decided to say screw it and took me on the stretcher and just walked through the uncleared area and put me on the bird. Timing is everything. I was bleeding out, and, and at that point I knew I was not in good shape. Three days later, Riley woke up in Landstuhl, Germany, on the operating table. As much as there was tragedy and everything that was going on, as much as we were, the anguish that was going on. Um, he with, was still alive. He was alive. And the little miracles that came along the way. I mean, he died, they said, a couple times along the way. He had major injuries. He was, I mean, still critical. One of the reasons they delayed even getting him from Germany was um, he became unstable getting on the plane. They had to take him actually off the plane. Um, and get him back to the hospital. All told, Riley would endure more than 25 surgical procedures to address a variety of internal injuries and extensive damage to his legs, lung, and left arm and hand. His legs were amputated above the knees, along with three fingers on his left hand. In San Diego, Dan was fitted for his first pair of prosthetics. But it was his introduction to surfing that really got him moving in the right direction. In 2008, CF Operation Rebound with Naval Medical Center San Diego created a surf clinic so troops could rehabilitate from surfing. Since that time, we've helped hundreds of troops like Daniel experience the healing power of sports. I was just off of my last couple surgeries, so I was still recovering from open wounds, and I uh, went down, got on the water, and caught my first waves pretty soon, and just having fun and being active again, which, you know, after months of hospitals and surgeries and therapists, and it was fun and had a great time. Operation Rebound for me has given me opportunity to be in a community where people are active and are making the choice to be out there. It puts you in a community where you don't have any excuses. It makes it easier to make the choice to be active and live life, not just 
be alive. Seeing how well Daniel's doing now makes all that's happened in our family's life worth it. Now Dan is a role model for other injured troops. He is choosing to live his life to the fullest. I'm thankful to, to the corpsman, the entire medical team that patched me up and got me where I am now. To my family that's been there every, every step of the journey. And to the, to the other troops out there, the other veterans, the other athletes, the other amputees that have set me up and put me on a path. It's going to be a long journey, but it'll be a fun one. And who knows what the next adventure will be.